Recently, Kansas City launched its first ever digital roadmap, setting goals and securing our place as a leading digital city. It also supports Kansas City's future workforce by addressing digital inclusion and creating a pipeline of homegrown talent. It makes Kansas City a smart city using technology to find better efficiencies in city service delivery. A smart city is a technological framework that for starters will bring features like interactive kiosks, mobile applications, sensory technology, and smart street lighting to Kansas City. Throughout the year, staff focuses on citizen engagement to talk about city priorities. Due to the voter-approved change in the city charter, I work with Troy and various city staff to make sure that the budget is responsive to citizen input. It's a painstaking process, and I'm not just talking about the long hours that go into it. I'm talking about the difficult choices we have to make on what programs to fund and at what levels to fund them. We've also strengthened the city's credit rating by reforming our pension plans and fully funding pension obligations for the first time in a decade. We have also figured out better ways to listen to citizens and improve engagement with things like citizen work sessions. We're making budget decisions more closely aligned with citizen input. Public-private partnerships are primarily a method for getting things done around City Hall. With such partnerships, we use fewer government resources and better leverage each dollar. Last February, I was invited to the White House as President Obama unveiled My Brother's Keeper, a program to implement what he calls cradle to college to career strategies to address persistent opportunity gaps faced by boys and young men of color. My Brother's Keeper has six goals and they're listed on the screen. As I learned about each of them, I was struck by the fact that Kansas City is a leader in many of those areas. One of the President's goals in particular is close to my heart, reading a grade level by third grade. We now have Mayor's Nights and Club KC, including involvement of organizations like Arts Tech, the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, and the Plaza Branch of the Kansas City Public Library. Combined last year, Mayor's Night's activity served nearly 6,000 basketball, volleyball, and soccer athletes aged 10 to 25. Last summer alone, Club KC served more than 10,000 Kansas City 12 to 18-year-olds, and youth crime dropped 18% while Club KC was in session. We all know that there have been so many ideas and plans for equalizing the east and west sides of our city. But through these collaborative efforts, we are going to turn those ideas and plans into some action. One such plan is a catalytic urban redevelopment. This is going to be a long-term strategic and holistic approach. But now is the time to build on the developments east of Truce that we discussed last year, like the new Aldi grocery store at 39th and Prospect, the police department's Leon Mercer Jordan campus at 27th and Prospect, Beacon Hill and the dissolution of the nine-year-old housing receivership. That's why the city is a key partner in both the Promise Zone designation application and Choice Neighborhoods grant application. Four years ago, I promised you that my office would be engaged in education unlike any mayoral administration before. We've never backed down from that promise. In my four years in office, I've read to children in 40, 80 schools that I've visited. I can tell you firsthand that there are some great schools, some excellent teachers, uh, uh, thousands of joyful children in this city. The common perception persists, however, that there are no good education opportunities in Kansas City, Missouri, but that is simply flat out wrong. There is no better evidence of that than this. Last week, Kansas City Public School Superintendent Dr. Steve Green was named by his peers as the recipient of the 2015 Pierce Award for Missouri Superintendent of the Year. Congratulations, Dr. Green. I firmly believe that education is an opportunity to be seized and leveraged into jobs, health, and happiness. We have two opportunities, actually. Opportunities to increase quality seats and grow individual student achievement, particularly in reading, and opportunities to close the education gaps between kids in poverty and kids who are not. 28 schools in Kansas City, Missouri, serving nearly 18,000 children, beat the state average in both reading and math. These are schools with quality seats. Office and turn to Page KC joining forces with America's Promise Alliance to host a mobility summit this fall. This mobility summit will bring together leaders in education, housing, city government, 
refugee resettlement, youth services, homeless support and transportation to see how we as a city can curb the root causes of family mobility. The troubles we've witnessed in Ferguson, Missouri have placed a strong focus on the issues that we still have to overcome as a nation and right here in Kansas City. Ferguson reminded me of the emotions that this city and the entire nation experienced when Martin Luther King was assassinated. I was also reminded that strong communities overcome adversity not by violence, but by upholding strong values. Last November, I asked that our community, rather than fight with our fists, that we fight to eliminate the very conditions that led to the conflict and the eventual death of Michael Brown. That is the opportunity that events like Ferguson actually presents to us. The opportunity to have open dialogue about race and community relations in our city. The Kansas City Police Department, under the visionary leadership of Chief Darrell Forte, and through community policing policies, its Citizens Police Academy and other public outreach has opened doors for increased understanding in this city. I reject the false argument that placing common sense limits on how guns are regulated somehow robs people of Second Amendment rights. We place limits on who can drive a car, and yet all those who do so responsibility maintain the right to do so. The time is now to get guns out of the cars of young gangbangers, out of the hands of felons, and out of the hands of the mentally unstable. It isn't about restricting the rights of people to lawfully keep guns. The armed offender docket legislation is about protecting the right of six-year-old Angel Hooper to be able to go to the store with her father without being shot. It's about protecting the safety of children like three-year-old Demaya White, who was gunned down in her own home along with her mother while her 11-month-old brother was left to wander around in that house on his own. It's about Kavier Tyson Curry, a 10-year-old boy who was paralyzed after bullets hit him and killed his father while they were outside a local gas station. While I'm proud that we're able to limit the number of homicides in Kansas City, each death is one too many. Fly over country no more. Kansas City is the center of the American Renaissance. We are the city that cities now look to for ideas on how to fight crime, how to get kids reading a grade level at third grade, how to innovate governmental processes, how to grow the economy in the right ways. Now, last fall, the Royals became America's team. So I wrote an open letter to the country embracing their enthusiasm, but also touting our charm, our edginess, and our unique amenities. I had never been so proud of this city. That pride didn't center on baseball. It centered on Kansas City, finally taking its rightful place on center stage in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the state of our city is full of opportunity. I assure you I'll continue to seize each and every one with your help and support.